Hello, and welcome back. No, this is too weird, hang on. Perfect. Yo, what's up guys? Right, all better now. Has VAT registration ruined my business? This is one of the things I wanna to talk to you guys about today, about being VAT registered, of owning a small business, and only doing domestic. Disclaimer, start off right off the bat. Disclaimer, I wrote a few notes down. You can see here. Uh, I am probably the least qualified person to be talking about uh, finances, business strategies, anything to do with business. I can only advise you of the stuff that I've learned from being not VAT registered for 11 years to being VAT registered for one year. Uh, this is my thought, so please do not copy, recreate any of these stunts in this video because it's on you then. Okay, cool, that's out of the way and done with. Being VAT registered on a business is sometimes a huge achievement for people and businesses. For me, it's not. It means you've hit a milestone of how much you earn, sorry, turnover, uh, but for me, I've really, really always try to stay away from being VAT registered, and these are the reasons in a minute why. Um, it's been nothing but a nuisance to me, and being a domestic electrician, which only work in people's houses, not large commercial or industrial sites are working for big businesses, it's just impacted me greatly. So these are the points. So let's go straight off the bat. So what is the criteria of being VAT registered? Criteria is having a taxable turnover of £85,000. That is your materials and your labour combined. So for a small business, one-man band, you've done well if you've gone over it. Um, it depends, obviously, what part of the country you live in. London, or well, to me it would be London, it would be you charge a lot more. Look at Jordan with Cambridge, charge a lot more, bigger jobs. Your turnover will be massive very quickly. Around my area, especially from the small village from when I built this business up from the beginning, uh, getting to £85,000 was massive, unachievable, way out of the league. But obviously I got there eventually with the stuff from YouTube, um, working hard, getting bigger jobs, uh, having an apprentice, all this sort of stuff combined has led it to be over £85,000. So when you hit the threshold of the 85K, uh, your, yourself or your accountant should enrol you for that registration within 30 days of peaking that threshold. So from the day of registration, you will then have to add an additional 20% on top of your invoices. That's on top of everything. And that then goes into a nice little pot that has to sit on the side. And every quarter, so every three months, the government will go, can I have my £4,000 or however much of that is? And you have to pay in quarterly instalments. And it has to be on time or because everything's very, very strict when you're that registered. Um, so you have to make sure you get it on paid or you get late payments. So if it's not how much you physically earn within the year. So this is one of the things that my mom taught me from day one of being self-employed is it's called a roll in turnover. So it's not how much you went from each tax year. So let's say 2021 to 2022. It's in a 12-month period, but it's called a roll in turnover. So a roll in turnover could be like you say from April to April. And then when it goes to May, it moves to May. And it's the June to June. It's always a 12-month cycle. So if you were to earn a massive amount in April, once that April turned around and goes off and it goes to May for the following year, that amount you earned for that roll in turnover in April last year is then deducted off. So it makes, and it all makes sense towards the end of the video when I talk about how you can try and stay below the threshold as best as possible legally is doing different ways of having payments, uh, not all in one go. You can put it over one or two months. So the roll in turnover is less. The next thing is let's get to the benefits of being VAT registered. The benefits, apparently there's some for me. No, nope, we'll get there. Benefits of being uh, VAT registered. So when you are a business, which most people have got one, if you're watching this video, if you're VAT registered, you appear to be a bigger business to other businesses, which actually makes you more attractive to some businesses. For me, not really, but if you are to doing more commercial and industrial work and you want bigger contracts, they look for VAT registration to show, oh, it's a sizable company, they're earning a decent amount. That makes you more appealing to them. Next thing is you can claim the VAT back for the stuff you buy. So everything you buy, you can claim VAT back on it. Uh, fuel, uh, expenses as in like vehicle running costs, pretty much anything that you already claim tax back for for your business, you can then take the VAT back as well. And this also, you can predate this back a year. So when I was VAT registered and I bought my van eight months before, I could claim the VAT back off the van, which was about two, two and a half thousand pounds. So that was decent and it got knocked off my VAT bill claim my VAT back to the AT bill. Yeah, that's the one. So that is a slight benefit. And like you said, this is materials. This is anything you do towards the businesses, it's tools. If there's a VAT on it, you can claim it back and it will go against your VAT bill or your quarterly VAT bill, 
which your account will all sort out as long as you've provided all your receipts. So how has it affected me being VAT registered with a small business only in domestic? A few bullet points, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but the stuff that I would want to know if I was you. There's a lot more paperwork. You have to be so, so, so strict on making sure every receipt is accounted for, every invoice is accounted for, your invoices that you've sent out to the customers, bank statements, anything and everything you can think of that's around your business that has gone in and out of your account, anything you would sort of do for your end of year account, which realistically is everything I've already said, but this has to be done now. Every time you've had something in, you have to do it quarterly. So you can't just, which a lot of us do, is just push it towards near the end of the year, near towards January when everything needs to be in by, give it to your account in a shoebox and it gets done. This has to be done in a very strict time period. And for me, with the busiest life in the world, that is sometimes difficult. I know I've got the Tradify app, which helps my world of good, and I've got a good accountant, so we always backwards and forwards, but sometimes things are missed. I need to jump back and grab things and bank statements and this. So that is a bit more of a stress, rather than a do, but it's a time frame that we have to keep to. So on top of that, more cost. And one thing of being VAT registered now, I still haven't upped my cost slightly to account for the extra cost you have to pay for being VAT registered, i.e. quarterly payments that you have to make to HMRC for your VAT. So roughly, I think my account charged me, I think 140 pound-ish, I think, I need to double check that. I should check this before the video, but. So now this is one of my biggest, biggest points of being VAT registered is the downfall for me is as a domestic spark in a normal sized town, uh, I'm here to make a living, not a killing, like I've said on other videos, I don't want to be ripping people off, is I am now competing against other sparks that I know and have known for a very long time who are still not VAT registered and each one of my invoices is 20% more. And that isn't too bad when we're doing smaller jobs. We're just changing light fittings. We're just adding an extra socket. We're just moving a light, putting some down lights in. It's not too bad. But this is when we get into fuse board changes or house rewires. The simple thing is if I'm quoting someone £5,000 for a house rewire, which around here is about average. It changes from place to place all over the country. £5,000 in Stafford, where I'm from, isn't unreasonable to ask for with the amount of stuff they're having. Someone could quote £5,000 for exactly the same thing as me, but I'm adding another £1,000 on top just for the pleasure of being that registered. So if your person sat at home right now and you're going, who would you rather choose? The two exactly the same quotes for two exactly the same things to be done. One person's a thousand pound more. The only way I'm willing, winning that job is from my personality. Really making sure I'm on time, I'm competent, I'm punctual, which is the same thing. I'm smartly dressed, the customer likes me for me and the way I'm trying to sell my business against the other person. I need to do that that has to be worth a thousand pound, me trying to sell myself more, more than this other person. So that is the biggest killer for me is losing jobs now, which I am starting to do against other local sparks because I cannot compete because now I have to add this extra 20% on, which I didn't before. And now my repeat customers that I've had for years and years and years, some of them are absolutely fine with it. It is what it is. They see it as a business growth and right, we want Nick in, we're happy to pay the extra 20% more. But like I say, when it starts coming to bigger jobs, fuse boards, I charge, £650 on average for an RCBA fuse board. 20% on top of that now, compare it to other guys who are fitting split low boards. I can't compete, I really can't compete. So it's a bit of a struggle to be honest. So really overall from what I can see about being VAT registered now for a year compared to being unvat registered for the past 10 years prior to this, it's just been a pain, it's been a faff. It's more hassle than I want, but why now I'm there, I can't get out of it unless I, for a prolonged period of time, dip how much I'm earning to become unvat registered, which is a thing. Not much I can do other than just get on with it, try and find my work. Or the only thing I can say is I branch out and start doing commercial industrial or working for people that are VAT registered and want to have a VAT registered a company working for them. So there is a few tips that I can try and give you guys to keep yourself below the threshold. These are tips. Just go with it. This is what I've thought of and what I could find online. One, work a four day week. That might sound absolutely ridiculous, but if you're earning enough to keep yourself going, paying all your bills, having a bit of savings in the bank, but you're not overdoing it and you're living a comfortable life, maybe I just had to take a pause thanks my daughter just walked in and woke up. I have no reason at all. Been asleep two hours. Living a comfortable life and you can say, right, well, I really don't need to work the Fridays. I don't need to work the Mondays. Monday is going to be my paperwork day, which my old boss used to do, which is a great idea, by the way. Then take it off. That's four days a month gone 
four days worth of pay, let's say you're charging 250 pound a day, there's a thousand pounds less a month, there's 12,000 pound less a year. That might like seem a lot, but if it keeps you below the threshold and keeps your income coming in from your domestic and all that sort of stuff work, then maybe it's something to take on the chin, maybe it's something to think about, or just take two days off a month instead of the four. The next way, and is the biggest way, Dave Savory does this very well, or did, and now he's fat registered, <laughs> is big, big jobs. I'm not saying every job, but bigger jobs, fuse boards, anything with your materials are high cost, rewires, fuse boards especially, maybe jobs with a lot of down lights, down lights ain't cheap, or customers buying their own socket fronts, if we're having brushed chrome sockets everywhere, realistically that's 12 pound, 15 pound a pop per socket, is get the customers to pay uh, the wholesalers or pay the bill to anywhere they've bought them from, screw fix, pick them themselves, order them themselves, pay the materials directly so that does not go on your invoice and does not go to your overall turnover. That way, per year, I think last year my material bill, or year before, from I can remember from my accounts, was 35 grand. And if I'd have got my customers to even pay half of that, realistically, I'd have been below the threshold for another year. I know we won't have to go and do these videos, will we? And the last thing, like I said earlier, with the rolling turnover thing, is if you've got a big, big rewind coming up, and you're doing first and second fix, and there's plasters in between, this is to electricians, but this will apply to all the other trades, and you've got a 10 grand job in, get paid five grand in one month and get paid five grand in another month. That way when April to April comes again, you've not got 10 grand and then down to nothing, you've got five and five and it spreads the cost out a little bit. And that might be towards the end of the year of the rolling turnover where the extra five grand could have chucked you over, but because you've split it over two months, it's actually dropped you under. So to round it all off, in the end, if you've earned over 85K taxable turnover, you're gonna be getting that registered. And the only way from my accountant has said it to me a long time ago from what I can try and quote is, if it is an anomaly, if you end up getting one of these jobs, which you wouldn't normally get, and it peaks you over, but you can, you can go to HMRC and say, yeah, this is an anomaly, this isn't rare, this will drop back down, and you can drop back down and stay under it. I'm not sure how much you peak by, but I know if you do go over the top by a little bit, you can then have a chat and you can stay below the threshold and not be VAT registered, then you're okay and you don't have to be VAT registered. I said that registered a lot in this video, but if you go over it again, you have to be. You have to make sure you are. If you don't go, you will get caught and find a lot of money again. What's all they want? They all just want they just want the money off you. Bang, 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 bang. More and more, more, more. What I'd like to see is they can look at smaller businesses like myself and go, yep, yeah, their turnover is this much, but their materials is a lot. I'd like to see them push it to maybe the threshold to 100 grand or even just work off your profits and do that registration on profits per business rather than overall turnover. Because it's nothing but damage mine, to be completely honest, it's just causing me more grief, more hassle, more money, and a lot more of a headache and trying to fight for jobs now rather than being comfortable and confident when I've sold myself, my services, I've got the job, and then competing against people which I wouldn't normally do. So that's my take on it, guys. Let me know all your thoughts below, please. Like, subscribe if you haven't already, please because I put a suit on and everything. Didn't iron the shirt, but we can go with that. Um, but yeah, I hope it's been some help and uh, any guidance that any of you guys could give in the comments below, please do. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.